Dell Shores. Not yet? Oh. And we're live. Are we live now? Yes. This is so new. I'm Dell Shores. And I'm Emerson Collins. And you're watching The Dell and Emerson Show. Straight talk. Real gay. Oh, okay. God. Why gay, we did it. We, we, we practiced it everything. We did. You know, they say good dress rehearsal, terrible opening. Oh, hey, was- everybody watching out in the world. Welcome to our show. We did the Dell and Emerson show for three years on UBN Radio, and we decided now was the perfect time to bring it back because we have lots of free time. I know. I was like, when is when is it going to be four o'clock? I'm ready. What it is just a reflection of is that we are not essential people. <laughs> well, we don't do, do was, essential things. We've been shut down. We just got it's, shut down everywhere. You it's know, true. When now, to- wherever you are watching this broadcast, we can see your comments on the Facebook page. So I will see your comments. We will see your questions and we will bring them up later in the show. All right. And we're going to keep talking on each other because we we haven't quite gotten this down. This is all new to us. We used to be in a studio with headsets and a microphone, but now we have to kind of watch to see when we stop talking. Yes. Well, you know, I realized we've been doing so many things. You've been doing all these live stream shows. Yeah, solo stuff though. It's what like, you been doing? Well, <laughs> I've been every night at seven o'clock um, on my Facebook page. I read these sorted bedtime stories. And in, in two thousand and six, two thousand and seven, I wrote a, a, a partial novel, which I feel like now I have to finish. And That's every true. yeah, every single um, chapter was the name of a character, and the whole novel told a story, and it was literally the prequel to Sorted Lives, which became the series. So I I unearthed them and I've been reading them. And then at 7.30, I just show episodes of um, Sorted Lives, the series. Tonight is uh, episode number 10. And I am out in Palm Springs, quarantined at Scott Nevin's house with Blake. And so last night we did a live stream, fake version of The People's Couch. And we watched the entire Royal Housewives of New York premiere and live streamed it from the couch. Uh, talking along and watching with the people. And it actually turned out really fun. It was fabulous. I watched it. I well, I was a little worried that people would realize that what happened on the people's couch is that we watched a show for an hour. They took like the four funny things we said and made that seem entertaining. And the rest of the time we were just eating cheese its and watching television. Yeah, well, but but the good thing is everybody was watching with you this time. So it, it was a little bit of a different experience, which communal I- Communal experience. Yeah. So-, so uh, uh, yes. I just wanted to say, and our very special guest star today on the Dell and Emerson show is Mr. Leslie Jordan. I mean, we thought, we thought, and we thought, and we thought, who, who for our first show? And of course, we called on the funniest man I know, who was your co star in a very sordid wedding. It's true. Y'all, obviously, we love Leslie, and he's been blowing up all over the internet, but he has taken some time out of his busy Instagram schedule to join us, so he'll be here a little later. And whether you're watching on Facebook, on YouTube, or Periscope, all of your comments come together so I can see everything that y'all have to say. There you go. Yay! So, our show has always been about what's happening in the week in LGBTQ news, so we're going to keep that as the focus and share the stories that we think are serious, that should be talked about, that are funny, that you should know about, and then we'll get to Leslie in a little bit. So, kicking it off, um, story number one. This week, the FDA announced that finally, men who have sex men with other men can donate blood after being celibate for only three months instead of 12 months, which was the original absurd, ridiculous ban. Now, it's not any better. I mean, I guess if this quarantine lasts for three months, there'll be some gay men that are single and have been at home that'll be able to donate. But there are also men who sleep with men who have had the virus, who now have plasma that doctors and researchers could use to work on a vaccine, to work on a cure, that they can't take plasma from these men because of these ridiculous, draconian, archaic, homophobic, biphobic, panphobic rules from the FDA. It's crazy that this is still going on, Emerson, because when I, I remember when I was working on Queers Folk, it was one of our big episodes was when uh, Brian wanted to give blood to Michael and he could not. And it was it was uh, we, we were thinking, oh, it, it, with all the 
you know, the, the science that we, we now have, this is going to go away. And it's just crazy that it hasn't. Also, anything that men who sleep with men can have, other people can have. So they're testing the blood anyway. Right. And not only that, we're facing a national blood shortage. The Red Cross hospitals are talking about how because of what's happening and because of people can't go out, blood donations are low. So there's an actual shortage and they're still like, mm, no, we don't want to have your weird gay sex blood. It makes my brain bleed. Yeah. All right. And so we also have in the news more anti LGBTQ story. This one just, you know, this one just pisses me off because I just stay pissed off at Franklin Graham. And I, I mean, right. I, I, so yeah. he now has this, this, this uh, Samaritan's purse, which is set up in Central Park. And it, it sounds like a really good thing because it's 68 bed respiratory unit, but they are recruiting these Christian volunteers, and they have to uh, adhere and sign that they will agree that number one, transgender people don't exist. They don't exist. So I just want, you know, my good friends, Calpurnia, Danielle, y'all don't exist, according to Franklin Graham. Um, same sex marriage is a sin. Well, we knew that. I mean, that's um, fine. Like, sure. They've been saying that forever. Gay people should be celibate. Uh, well, I am. In fact, the FDA. I am so celibate right now during the coronavirus and, and or risk damnation and eternal punishment. Well, I took that risk a long time ago, Franklin fucking Graham. And I, I, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. I feel like if I go to eternal damnation, at least Cher will be there. I'm willing to risk it. No, but seriously, I mean, you know, I'm being silly here a little bit, but it pisses me off. And I want to ask you, Emerson, because I grew up with Billy Graham Crusades. You know, I we always went with my, my parents and I don't remember his dad being such a vile human being. He no, seemed to I mean, have a loving heart. Maybe he believed this shit, but he didn't spew hatred like this asshole does. Well, Billy was, you know, definitely your fire and brimstone, like that good old Scott. But that, I feel like that was so much more back in the day where people didn't preach sermons about LGBTQ people. It was just known, you know, yeah, you'd rail about the sodomites once a year just to get it in. But Franklin's definitely leaned all the way into the modern, like full bigotry, full Trump supporting, full, you know, sold his soul to MAGA. Oh, it's just country. Well, all right. Fuck him. Moving on. Go. <laughs> All right. Well, this next one, you know, I, I, I abs as we discussed the other day, I devoured Tiger King because I am just appalled and fascinated by this polyamorous, homosexual, gun-toting, mullet-wearing, underwear-designing, live stream show-directing Joe Exotic. And bless his heart, this man, more than anybody we've ever known, and we've known some people, just wants to be famous. I don't think he even cared about the Tigers. The man just wants to be famous. And, and now he finally is and he's stuck in prison. And that poor husband must be going every day to read him like tweets and news clippings about how well he's doing when he finally gets out in, you know, 22 years. Is but that what it is? I haven't gotten to the end. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like, I need one and a half episodes. Well, yes, he got 22 years and he's in a prison. And I believe he's actually in Fort Worth. Um, there, but what's happened to him is that he has been quarantined and quarantined in the medical center in the prison after being exposed to the coronavirus. Now, that actually speaks to a very serious issue about how they're dealing with coronavirus within prisons, because obviously inmates and guards are going in and out and going lots of places. So it's only the people who work at the prisons who could be bringing it in. But then once it's there, there's no way for the inmates to get away from each other unless they're in solitary or isolation. So that's actually a big issue that Joe's related to. And at the same time, he's suing the government and the fish and wildlife or whatever for $94 million for an anti-gay discrimination saying that he was targeted because he's an openly gay male with the largest collection of generic tigers and crossbreeds. Now, I'm gonna call bullshit on this. It's the boy who cried homophobia. Cause like, sir, they don't care where you put your penis. They care that you were keeping these animals and crossbreeding and I think more to do with how you were disposing of them illegally. Well, is that what 
See, I don't know what did, did he get convicted for trying to murder that woman or did that? Did, yes. Two of the counts were about the attempt to murder for hire. And then there were like eight counts about the animals. Like they kept stacking things onto it okay. um, in order to keep it. Uh, well, I think, you know, trying to kill somebody or, or putting a hit out is kind of I don't think you. It, there's anything homophobic about going after somebody who, you know, it's like that's homophobia. I was just yeah. trying to kill her. Yeah, no, that's not, but also, and I know you're not done, but I gotta be honest that Joe, like was pro a little bit involved, but I feel like he probably said every day, someone should kill that woman because you may not have gotten there, but that other guy, the salt and peppery dude and the guy that worked for him, I'm like, he said at one point in the series, I'm not gonna do anything Joe tells me to do. I work for Jeff, I think his name was. So I feel like there's also a little bit of conspiracy between the two of them. To yeah. set Joe up for this a little bit. I, I got to that. I got to that too, where there was that, you know, uh, the, 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 the trans man that was uh, without the arm that they mislabeled. I uh, can't, I can't, like him, like, oh, I lost my arm, but I'm just going to go right back to work. Sir, nobody, nobody should be that devoted to anybody. But I, and I wanted to know did, did you go back and say, hey, cat, you shouldn't have bit off my arm? Did you make up with the cat? Like inquiring minds want to know. I'd love the follow-up interviews. These, so, are, these are the important questions. All right. So so on to, to good stuff. Can we yes. like, I mean not that that's not that's entertaining, but it's mm -hmm. like I said the other day, it is beyond any white trash that I've ever written. Any. Correct. So but I love that Dolly Parton is uh reading to kids. And on YouTube uh, during this time, it's like she's got this, you know, she's been doing really great things for many, many years with her imagination library. And you can go there to imaginationlibrary.com and anybody can sign up and your kid will get a book every single year or, or maybe it's every month. I'm not sure. But it's a very great it's a it's a book because she grew up in the, you know, in Appalachia where there wasn't a lot of reading going on you know it was like that people had to struggle to get an education and that's the way she's giving back so she gets in her bed i watched one of them today it's so cute and she read the little engine that could which you know leslie quoted and sort of laughs i think i can i think i can um and then also so so that's uh, i believe that's on monday nights but just go on her youtube channel which is imagination library and subscribe and if you got little little ones running around or nieces or nephews or kids let let them watch dolly read because it's 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 wonderful and then my good buddy bo bridges is doing uh live guys i'm in my house and i've got chihuahuas it's gonna it's special guest stars gracie louise don't you make me come over there um so, at least you're not alone it's a, yeah i always say emerson that if you don't know i'm gay by looking at me if I just take a walk with three chihuahuas, you're pretty sure. But if I yell out their names, Bitsy May, Gracie Louise, Sissy Marie, you know, you know, I'm a, I'm a gay man. So and I always say, if you don't know if I'm gay, all you have to do is watch me walk or talk. Oh, they're after a squirrel. That's what it is. So I'm going to finish this and I'm going to go and, and close that door because they're going to be they're going to be feuding with that squirrel for a while. So anyway, but Bo Bridges is also reading and he reads every Monday at noon Pacific Standard Time on his Instagram and his Instagram is Mr. Bo Bridges. So uh, and he he's like you such a gentle, amazing grandpa. He has so many grandpa. I mean, he has many grandchildren of his, of his own. So he's a really great reader. So y'all share that with the the kids in your life. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, you go fix this girl. Uh -huh. Okay, moving on to the next story. Look, I figured out effects and things. We won't even see him until he comes back. Okay, this next story represents. I find like stupid, lazy bigotry sort of hilarious. And there is a lawyer out of Colorado named Robert Abrams, and he had his law license suspended for three months and has to attend sensitivity training after he emailed two clients he was representing and saying about the judge in their case, the judge hates me. It happens. It's not the first time. I probably remind him of someone who beat him up when he was a fat kid. And now that he's a big fat judge, he gets even with the bullies. Maybe he just hates Jews. Who knows? Well, I was getting your case dismissed. I was getting yelled at by fatso. The judge is a gay fat fag. Now it's out there. Oh. 
that is just a kind of bigotry that I just find hilarious because it's literally like elementary school taunts, like fat phobia, homophobia, but like at the laziest level. I mean, it feels like it'd be the name of some great gay comedian's one man show, honestly. Uh, but the suspension was stayed pending the completion of 18 months of probation and he has to enroll in ethics school, do eight hours of cultural awareness and sensitivity training. When asked about it, he said, he's simply not a politically correct individual and will never be politically correct. That's how Billy is talked to the weaklings when I grew up. Then he tried arguing that the word fag describes a sissy, not a sex preference. Also denied having a bias against such homosexuals, going so far as to ask his gay cousin to testify about their warm familial relationship. I am not a bigot. Yeah, back to that. I know somebody. Yeah. Bless his bigoted heart. So it's like white people who say I have black friends. Like if you're having to say that, whatever you said probably was uh, bigoted in the first place. So now we going back to, I, I, cause we had to skip one because of this little bitch. Look at her, this is the culprit right there. Uh, so there was an anti-gay pastor who had uh, services in Louisiana, and he was slapped with misdemeanor charge. Uh, Y'all may have re heard about this. Tony Spell, he, he leads the Life Tabernacle Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I've passed through there many times, and I actually hosted something there once. And uh, he speaks in tongues. He's very, very charismatic. Two weeks ago, he bussed 1,800 people to attend his service, and he was told, don't do this. Do not do this. The governor, the governor said, do not do this. And he continued to do it, disobeyed them. And now he is up for six misdemeanor counts of disobeying the powers of the governor and defying the state's ban on public gatherings in response to the coronavirus. So Tony Spell, brother, brother, brother Tony, you're stupid. And also, he's not even alone. Like, there's so many, like, a bunch of those Florida churches. Like, the Florida stay-at-home order allows churches to continue to meet. And it supersedes any orders at a local level that would shut down a church. And I got to be honest. On one side, I feel like, let them. Let them get together. Let the stupid people get together. Let the bigots get together. I wish Trump would hold his rallies and let people yeah. get together. Because if, you know, Darwin, we could happen real fast. The problem is, you know, that then those people would go to the grocery stores that everybody has like one family member getting all their protective gear on and going to safely, as safely as possible every two weeks. And we'd run into them there and somebody else would get it. Because if it wasn't for that, I'd say, let them knock yeah. each other out. And touch your faces, touch each other and then touch your faces. Have these, yes, have those MAGA rallies. Um, did you, by the way, uh, speaking of churches, there was one that I thought got very creative where the pastor stood on the, the, uh, the um, steps of the church and had all the people come in their cars and the, in parking lots. And he preached through a megaphone. I, I love that. I, I sort of love that. All for creativity. My dad's church in Texas is live streaming so everyone can attend and their viewership has actually been up. And I told him, well, yeah, if you didn't have to get dressed and leave your house to go to church, I think more people would go. Sunday morning just seems like a lot. Yes, absolutely. All right. This next story is an example of why, you know, when people get afraid, their bigotry comes out. There's a couple in France, in Marseille, a Frenchman named David walked outside to go to his essential job and found a handwritten note on his windshield that said, could you please leave the residence? Because we know that you homosexuals are the first to be contaminated by COVID-19. This is the first warning. Thank you. Now, he went to file a police report and they dismissed it at first, saying it was not a threat, but a warning, which, OK. But after they went to social media, the LGBTQ division of the Bordeaux police reached out and opened an investigation. But David and his partner live in a secure residence. So the car is only accessible to other residents of their building and thinks the handwriting belongs to a neighbor who had previously filed a complaint against a Muslim couple. Now, to me, this speaks to the what happens when people get afraid. They lash out at anybody that's different, anybody they don't understand. It's what we've seen with a lot of happening to a lot of Asian people because of that bullshit where the president and a certain kind of conservative wants to call it the Chinese virus, which technically is where it came from. But what happens is then dumb people only hear the name and they start to think anybody from that culture or that community is representative. There's been photos of Asian people that have been physically attacked. Um, and this is another example of that. And morons and bigotry, when stupid gets together, it can become dangerous. 
Well, there you go. <laughs> like I have had a sermon about it. It just makes me crazy. You know, there's just so much, so much danger to other people comes from fear and hatred Why? and like bigotry that people are taught that they never expand beyond. Well, the one thing that I feel like that 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 has been a very positive thing with all of this is I have noticed a level of kindness going on. It, yeah. that, it seems like there most people uh, go to that level, although every now and then there's just some asshole troll that, you know, wrote, writes something nasty on your Facebook page or something. And you know what I do now? Because, you know, I, I am capable of taking the low road. It's a lot more scenic usually, yeah. but during this coronavirus, I've just, I've, 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 been, I've been biting my tongue and I'm going, okay, be kind, be ye kind one to another, forgiving hearts. I just try to be a little bit kinder because we are all so fucking stressed out. Yes. Um, and also Leslie Jordan will be joining us as our special guest in a few minutes. Um, and this is our quick commercial. Um, Dell and I are going to try to do this twice a week. We're going to get fun guests, tell fun stories, go through the news, give you an hour to take a break and be uh, informed and entertained. Obviously, we are entertainers and all of our income sources have stopped because we work in non-essential businesses. And so if you enjoy the show and you want to toss us a dollar or two or five like you were watching a movie or downloaded something from iTunes at the bottom of the screen, you can Venmo at Emerson Collins or PayPal to Beard Colin Shores Productions at gmail.com. And I promise to split it with Dell. Yeah, because he's controlling everything. I, I'm just sitting in my home, just hoping that I get screen time. Look what he can do to me. Just watch this. Watch this. Watch it. Oh, look, Dell's muted. There's nothing. He can't say anything. And it's all under my control. You can erase me as well. Um, but. Um, but yes, you know, we, we, we are doing this because we want to and everything. But, you know, yeah, yes, it would be nice if, if you know, some appreciation came in. Um, now, I have a question. Did you see Cats, the movie? I did not. Okay. I had never seen the musical and I saw the movie and I just thought it was absolutely terrible. Like I didn't find it entertaining. I don't want to go to those late night screenings where people are having rowdy screenings. I just thought it was bad in every way at every turn, for every reason. Tom Hooper should stop making musicals. I tried to let him have a pass with Les Mis because I love that show so much. But it came out recently that early on in the editing process, the visual effects department had to add all of the cat buttholes to the actors. Um, and so they spent several months adding buttholes to the cats. And then three months into the process, they decided it looked absurd and terrible. So they had to pay a whole other group of visual effects artists to take the buttholes back out of the movie. So everybody decided they wanted to see the butthole trailer, the butthole movie, the butthole cut, the butthole cut. I mean, I'd want to see it. I want to see Judy Dench's cat butthole. I want. I want. I want. I think that the, what's going to be really funny is when these visual effects people go in for interviews and they go, "Now, what did you do on cats?" Oh. Um, I I, uh, I put in the buttholes. Uh, a little cat butthole. Well, I did a cool butthole. A oh, well, cool little cat butthole. Well, somebody made a trailer, and Queerty has the article. You can go find it, and you can see the cat buttholes that somebody added to a trailer, and they're just giant and pink and offensive and hilarious. Um. All right. Are we ready? Is he here? Yes. Oh, my God. He's here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show. Ah, uh, our special Let's guest. Yes. Hi, yes. Leslie. I'm in, my, I'm in my bathrobe. I didn't realize it was going to be. I thought we were just going to talk. I'm well, we are going to talk. Oh. Straighten your hair. Straighten your hair. Did you have a good day, Mr. Viral Sensation? This is crazy what's going on with you. It's so hard being viral because what an awful thing to say. <laughs> this day and age. It's the first yeah, time I've being gone. viral has ever been a win. I have no idea. I have no idea. I um I didn't even join. Who's that barking? Is that it's crazy. It's your god dog. I'm gonna go make her stop. Now I saw that you were watching porn on Instagram this morning. Oh that I was pretending. I just tuned it in for the sound effects. <laughs> but anyway, real fast. I signed up for Instagram. I was on the Cool Kids, 
which was a TV show about a year ago, and um, Tess Sanchez Greenfield, who's married to Max Greenfield, who's the star of Neighbors, it's on CBS on Monday night. His wife, Tess, Tess Sanchez, is head of, the, she's the big head honcho. She's head of casting for Fox. And she kept telling me when I'd say something funny, post that, post that. And I said, oh, no, I don't know what you mean. She said, post it, put it, put it on your Instagram. I said, I don't have. I don't have one. She goes, what? We were at this big event. She said to her publicity girls, sign him up. Well, I started and I, I would tell people I got 20,000 followers. I said, well, that's nothing. I said, well, are you nuts? 20,000. I have 20,000 people listening. to me. And then it jumped. Megan Mullally, my friend from Well and Grace, posted one of my uh Instagrams and it jumped to about 80. And I thought, oh, and this was till four days ago. I don't, I'm four days. You four, five days ago. I wanted, I said, it started climbing a little bit. And I thought, well, this is because everybody's home. And I started posting some things here and there, but I have no idea. I wanted to reach my goal was 250,000. And bam. One point one million. No, it's one. It's one point two now. Oh well, you know what I found out though. You only jump once you get to a million. You only jump every one hundred thousand. So yeah. I jumped. Oh, Leslie, that's I, all of Fort Worth and half of Dallas. But Leslie, yeah. let me just tell you where you are right now with your your will and grace. Yeah. So Sean Hayes has one one. So you just passed him. Eric McCormick has 387. I don't know what he's doing wrong. Deborah Messick has 1.3. You will pass her tomorrow, probably. Uh, and Megan also has 1.3. So you're going to pass the whole cast of Will and Grace. But why? What do because you, you are hysterical. And they're just, I, I mean, what do you think, Emerson? I just, we can't stop watching them. Leslie, literally nothing is funnier than you yelling at your mother in the background. And if also, those early... There, I made that up. <laughs> she she gets mad at me. Because, see, right now I'm sitting. I was home visiting family, and then all this hit. So I thought, I got to hunker down with my family. And But I thought, I can't live. You know, I love my mother. I love my twin sisters. But well, there's no way. I could live. So I leased um, a, a a little loft. It's adorable um, in the downtown area. So what I do is I go out during the day, put my mask on and my gloves, and I drive all the way out there. And then I just spit. Where'd he go? He's yelling at them puppies. You just keep talking to the people at home. You need to gas that chihuahua. <laughs> at least one. Like three's too many. It's like a menagerie at this point. Come back. We got to figure this out. <laughs> I threw him in the bedroom. <laughs> so you put on your mask and you go out. And I sit with them and we, you know, visit and we have a <coughs> wonderful day. But then I have to come back and, and uh, I sit. And after I got all my material, I sit and pretend mama's in the off in the corner. <laughs> she doesn't like it at all. She does, has she seen them, Leslie? No, 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 no. <laughs> you can't no. show her that one. Although no, they have one any off. of them. I showed her one, and uh, she thought it was really cute. I can't remember which one, but I showed her some of them. But no, 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 no. What but about Leslie, people love it also because you speak for all of us. You're just tired and exhausted and stuck. And what are we all going to do? I don't know. And, I'm and figuring one out. I'm gonna paint my nails and then watch it dry. Okay. I'm <laughs> it out. That'll, that'll be more than a minute. Toenails. That's a, what I can't get over is what is really brilliant. What you do is how you can do so much in so little time. You can yeah. make us. You can tell a whole story and make us laugh. And I go, that has to be more than a minute. No, I keep and it under a minute. You do. I know. You know, People Magazine called. You wouldn't believe when you go viral, people, oh, what, Ryan Seacrest people called, Mario Lopez people called, all the people are calling. 
but they they want to do an interview of, of such. But People Magazine wanted 15 minutes of me with my cat. They didn't understand that's not my cat. I don't. So anyway, I don't know. Well, <laughs> um, also, but I'm just impressed because both of you, the entire 15 years I have known you, have never told a story that lasted less than 10 minutes. <laughs> and here you are making one minute stories. <laughs> but, but <laughs> we want to say thank you for doing our little show, the premiere of our show back back with the Della Emerson show, because I know you're doing today's show and, and People magazine and oh I yes. Because we you yes. know there are people in our lives who got famous who would not do what you do, Leslie. I'm so, hey, you're not gonna name names. No, I'm not gonna name names. For the <laughs> first time ever. Uh, I wonder if he ever not name names. Yeah, ask about the. Ask a question. We we're so excited about your new TV show. We're returning to the air, and I want to tell. I, I I want to remind you of when you got canceled, the day you got canceled, and you called me and you said you said I am gutted. We just got canceled and we're a hit. And I said Leslie, something is going to come up bigger, and I bet you this is going to run for five, seven, eight, eight years, and it's gonna be all you need. But tell us about it, and I will also wanna know, just because I know we have a lot of, of aspiring actors and actors, you did, you did something really brilliant after you got cast, and I want, I want you to tell that story that you've told me. Well, it wasn't really anything I did. What had happened was, I was cast, it's called Call Me Cat, it's a very big project at Fox TV. It's a great to series order because of the, the pedigree. It's Jim Parsons is producing it. Uh, Mayim Bialik and Swoosey Kurtz are mother and daughters in Lexington, Kentucky. One's fancy. Swoosey's fancy, but her daughter's not fancy, and she just wants her to get married. And Mayim takes her dowry and buys a cat cafe. And within the cat cafe is... Uh, Kyla Pratt, who's a, a, just a little Disney darling and has big singing voice, and Cheyenne Jackson in uh, Heartthrob, <laughs> like a movie star. He does and, something to me. Well, and also a daddy, uh, such a good daddy to those. Yes. He's got twins. They're um, uh, beautiful. But anyway, what was I saying? Oh, they hired me to play this one part that was small, and Darling Hunt that created it, said, you know, it's just four lines, but we can, it's a 13 episode order. So we're going to develop this character. And I thought, well, I'll do four lines. And I read the script. I'd read the script a couple of times. Well, there was this character named Phyllis that was kind of, she, it never said a big old girl, but you knew she, her <laughs> husband, her <laughs> husband went to the big lots and felt saw a woman that made him feel 18 years old and he leaves her. And so the whole pilot, she just is so heartbroken and all these shenanigans happen. But anyway, Phyllis, the bottom line is she's pitiful. And I remember thinking, I was reading the script. I thought how it's hard, believe it or not, to play pitiful. Cause if you play pitiful, nobody's going to think you're pitiful. You've got to play it with such earnest, <laughs> and care them that people finally go, honey, she's pitiful. <laughs> she's pitiful. <laughs> so I know that my agency sent eight uh, women in and they could not find their Phyllis. So Darlene Hunt that created it called me one day. I knew, I knew she was uh, tiptoeing around it. Would I be willing to just take some of those lines, you know, maybe put them on video where and I said, I'll come in. She goes, what? I said, I'll come in and audition. Well, I went over there and they're a bunch of big old girls. <laughs> and you? And me. And I signed in. I didn't tell them I was reading for Phyllis. You know how you put who you're reading for. I didn't even put anything. Well, I went in there and read. And they called me that afternoon and said, it's Phil. We're going to make him Phil. Because you, and we're going to make him gay. Oh, and and it, you're I'm glad you did that. My partner has left me for a butch boy. I added that part. I added <laughs> it. I said he went over to the big lots and met a real butch boy. And he's left me, and it's oh, it's I get to be so pitiful. But anyway, met one of the butch boys like you like. 
Yes. So you, you, you cook paste. You bake pastries, right? You're you're a pastry. Yeah, I'm the. Chef. I cook at the. I bake. I'm the baker at the cat cafe that Mayan buys. So Just surrounded by pussy. So yeah, wrangle, wrangling. I wrangle the pussy. Well, have they have, have they delayed? I mean, how if they how are they dealing with this? With the well, you know, we were supposed to have a table read, a network table read. It was, you know, where'd he go? Y'all sit down and I'll stay right put. I don't know what he has. No animals to wrangle like me. We're working out of the house. Just real fast. They, um, we were going to do a network table read. I mean, it was ready to go. We were going to shoot a pilot and then come back in June and do 13, let's finish out the order, which would have been 12. Well, of course, when the, when the Warner brothers itself shut down, Warner brothers shut down. Yeah. And so they, they wrote us, uh, Darlene wrote us the sweetest, um, missive and said you know guys it's going to happen we've got zoom we're going to work you know we've got our writer's room in place and you know la 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 and it's almost like a cable schedule now because we're going to be able to get some scripts now before you even come in mm. but we'll do it in june but the cool part was when she um you know texted all of us well that put us in touch with each other so all of a sudden i'm telling cheyenne oh you just wonderful. I can't wait to meet you. And mom, I've loved you since, you know, you were a uh, bet meddler, a little baby bet meddler in beaches and we, and Swoosie and uh -huh. Kyla, and we created a love fest uh -huh. online for a series that hasn't even gone in production. Well, I love that. I love that. Isn't it great to work with people who are not assholes? And, and uh -huh. I don't, know, I don't know the rest of them, but I've heard all the, every one of their reputations. I know Caroline Ray wrote, Work, uh, worked with Cheyenne. I worked with Swoozy, and she is absolutely the sweetest and and funny uh, off screen. Swoozy is funny and a big practical joker, so you better watch out. Oh, she better not try anything with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, hey, hey, for those of you watching on Facebook and Periscope and YouTube, if you have questions, send them now, and I'll read them out in a little bit. Leslie, I want to show you something I learned. I learned today. Okay. I, I taught a tutorial because, you know, the internet is sold out of scarves and bandanas and masks everywhere. It's hard to make a mask. Well, I realized all us homosexuals can make a mask out of a jock strap. It's, <laughs> it's real easy. You take it, you put Don't the you waist put your face. around your head, and then you put the legs over your head. Take that off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've had worse. You've had worse in your mouth, Leslie. Does it and then stink? it's a mask. Does it stink? <laughs> well, this one's clean, but if you like to use the used no, one, hush, that's your personal hush. choice. <laughs> you know, um, I, I feel like that if you, he's in Palm Springs, Leslie. I feel like if you walked out on the street in Palm Springs, people wouldn't even bat an eye with that on your head. I know. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, Mike Lotus asked, when does the sitcom air? The sitcom airs. Um, well, I don't know because we haven't even shot it yet. It'll be the what Fox, network is it? Fox, Fox TV. Of course, I, I would imagine the fall of 2020. But uh, somebody uh, just said it's true. They said, you know, that line, I do you see my pussy now would work real well in that cat cafe, too. <laughs> oh. I'm going to, I'm going um, that. I'll add it at the table, read. you know, just a little. Leslie, remember how I didn't even write that line. The most famous line that is attributed to me, I did not even write it, was that grit that came up to you and said, you ought to just yell out, do you see my pussy now As you, while you throw those shoes? And it was a, well, a lighting guy. Is a grip a lighting guy? What's that? Griff, the lighting people. Somebody from the lighting Yeah, people. it was one of, the, one, of the, one of the crew members. And you did it. And... Um, there we go. There's a little sorted history for you. There you are. Uh, let, my one man show, I say I made it up. But anyway. Leslie, yeah. Scott, <laughs> Scott Fullerton <laughs> asked about the documentary that you're producing with Brandon Stansel. Is that something you can talk about? Well, he's put it all together. All I did was give money, really. I gave a lot. That's, he, that's he, the most um, important part. Yeah, he... Um, I know Ryan that manages him and uh, he's got that beautiful voice. And so 
uh, they were going to do this documentary and see he's from my hometown. He's from Chattanooga, Tennessee. And um, so we had met at um, Starbucks, I mean, a long time ago. And, you know, he's very handsome. So we started talking and got to be good friends. I'd go to Starbucks every day. And, uh, you know, he said, I sing and la, la, la. And I thought, yeah, well, anyway. But I, he has a really good voice. Oh, he opened for you at the Catalina Room when I was. Yes, was yes. Great. And that's the night I decided I, I'm going to help him. Because his story, you know, is so similar to all of us coming from a small town and gay and ostracized and on and on. And so he um, that's his documentary. And it's got it's got a great title. Three. Um, oh, three, chords. three chords and the truth and the truth. Yeah. Which is three. That's what they say. All country songs are is three chords and the truth. I think anyway. Leslie, do you watch RuPaul's Drag Race? I don't. Do you I know who watch. Latrice Royale is? She's a big old drag queen. Yes. Yes, well, I know who she is. Um, Chris Hamlin, her husband, is watching right now. He's had started a watch party. But she they are huge fans of Sorted Lives. Uh-huh. And I oh, freaked I've out when I met her. Nine, she's nine feet tall, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, nine feet tall. Yeah. Yes. You look like yes. a table lamp next to her. I look like a law known. <laughs> <laughs> well, the I way mean, everyone's yard pictures. needs decoration. Does Chris does Chris have a what I have been when I got pictures or maybe drag con yeah. in LA? Yeah. We got a bunch of pictures. But I yes. remember wearing my Latrice Royale t-shirt when the, the way we connect, I connected with her is uh, she quoted Sorted Lives on, uh, on Drag Race oh, 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 oh. a couple of hey. times. And I, I tweeted her and I says, thanks for the shout out. She was doing some uh, like uh, uh, the dating game of some sort. And Gus, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kinsworth uh, was the yeah. factor. And he asked if she was the top or the bottom bunk. bunk and she said, well, if I was the top, Bunk, I'd have to reinforce that that um, that bunk with love nuts. And oh, so uh, I want to say real fast that not that I don't watch RuPaul, I don't watch anything. Yeah, I decided it was the it was the best decision of my life. About three or four years ago, I thought at six o'clock the curtain goes down and I'm done. And I don't watch. Um, people say, but you go to the movies. Mm -mm. Last movie I saw was Brokeback Mountain. That with was me. A good one. You me. like that and spin I, shove? And I haven't seen a movie since. Uh, Billy Butler took uh, took me one time to a Disney. Uh, we saw a cartoon or something. But anyway, um, I just don't. Uh, so I, it's not that I don't watch RuPaul. I don't watch anything. Did Leslie like, wait? Did Chris this have conversation? A wait, this conversation has inspired me, Leslie. You should start a merchandise line of lawn gnomes that are you and <laughs> lawn gnome size and sell it. Everybody put them in their yards. A little less. Right. Well, you guys. I don't know. We can figure that it. out. You know what'd be more fun is where you'd make it, where you paint it yourself. You know, yeah. like you get those little. <laughs> oh, just get after a Paris. Those Let's craft we, jars. There's a lot of merch for you, baby. There, we we got to figure some shit out because <laughs> I think I think with your million, maybe it's a million three. Uh, oh yeah. Right. Uh, it's just when I, I was like. I'm gunning for Deborah. I'm gunning for Deborah and Megan. And you were you were gaining as many followers as I have on Instagram. You were gaining that in every hour. That's how crazy your Instagram was. Well, Leslie, so, I only have eighteen thousand, and I all but put my penis on it. Ah, I heard it's big. Oh, oh, you saw it when we were laying in that motel bed. I Leslie and I are shooting this super serious scene. I'm playing this serial killer telling his sob story. It's 110 degrees in the motel room. Leslie's in that wig and pajamas just sweating, and he keeps going, show it to me. Show it to me. <laughs> I will say it again. That day was so horrific, and it really you really did look like Courtney Love on a real bad day uh, in that wig. <laughs> I can remember one part. I just wanted to see it. It's when we first had to go in and you said, well, honey, we're going to have to turn off the air and shut the door. 
No. <laughs> yes, we do for sound. I said, I don't care. I'm scared I'll die. <laughs> and then you said, does he really need to say all those lines? <laughs> oh, no, I don't tell. Cut that. Cut that. That's hey, crazy. when you're lucky you were working with people in college, you never Cut missed the word. I mean, Where was that motel? I can't remember. Dallas. 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 It was North Bumfuck Dallas. It was so seedy, that hotel. But we had shot part of it up in Canada, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Is your life just becoming fuzzy, Leslie? Yes. <laughs> Where was that? <laughs> I have an ambient I take before I go to bed. It's now, Leslie, can you still get your tea? Well, how are you getting tea during the quarantine? Honey, I brew it. Oh, all your own. I'm making it at home. So you don't go to Starbucks? No, I brew it. And it's very, it, uh, uh, you put four tea bags and a quarter of water and a third, of, uh, one third cup of sugar. Here, I got it right here. I just brewed some. I do believe, I really do believe you need to reach out to Starbucks. They should sponsor everything you do because you they did for a little while. Did they? For a little while. Remember when I cussed that boy out? And After you got in that fight in front and threw your tea in that bigot's face? I threw it in his face because he called me a faggot. And then it got on national news and they said it was hot coffee. <laughs> said, no, no, no. I didn't throw hot coffee on anybody. It was sweet iced tea. <laughs> not so sweet. Me. This is what is is so bizarre. I, I'm not a celebrity celebrity, but how would they know TMZ that I was getting on a flight the next day? They have to be able to. I mean, it was crazy. Or did they just hank, hunker down around the airports? Because I yes. got out of a taxi the next day, and I was, and someone said, "Mr. Jordan, it's TMZ. I'd like to talk to you about throwing that tea." I said, "What?" It was crazy. Somebody, listen, I'm trying to figure out with the internet, somebody, if you put in your location, you can go from Instagram and it'll give you a, a an area. And it's saying that I'm at Georgia and MLK Boulevard, which I'm not. I'm not going to tell you where I am. But some fools out there hollering my name last night. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like this is not the right time to be stalked during a coronavirus just, outbreak. What about the Beatles? <laughs> I, somebody was out there, and that's the only thing I can figure because they were a block away. And that's what, um, anyway. It's, it's like whenever I see you driving out of the Erewhon in that convertible, and you look out the convertible and yell, Hey, sissy. <laughs> you haven't seen my new one, though, have you? I haven't I seen my new one. Oh, I yeah. Took, well. I took a few dollars from, uh, from uh, the other one, uh, the cool kids, and bought me a BMW. It's so beautiful. And then the series got canceled, and I thought, well, you get to keep the car. What, what else can you do? But then this other one's coming along. It's like how, it, much, long, how much longer are we gonna go? A while? <laughs> no, we, we can wrap it up. We're I'm done. Sorry, shut up, so tired. We're just enjoying you. You just, you know, you, we, it's like I, I said, I don't really have that many questions planned. I'll just let him talk. No. Um, <laughs> tarred. As we hey. say in Tennessee, tarred. I'm yeah. tarred. Well, we love you and we're proud of you. And hey. congratulations on everything. It's so well deserved, Leslie. Uh, okay. I'm, I like I'm, you both. And I want to say, real seriously, you know, I know we've all been doing this. Lord, I was looking at photos the other day of us being on tour and You've been in my life for 14 years, and it is just such a joy and a pleasure to watch your work. You're an inspiration oh. to our community. You are a leader, and we love you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll tune in to Call Me Cat. I guess that's next. Absolutely. Yeah. And Instagram. Follow it. If you're not following us oh, yeah. on Instagram, let's get him. Let's get him. What's that? It has to be T H E at the. Leslie Jordan. At the, Leslie, you got a million followers. All they have to do is type L E and you'll be yeah, one of the first people that, that comes There's up. that bitch right. up in there's that woman up there in a uh, mine somewhere has a clothing line. So anyway, <laughs> I'm I'm the Leslie Jordan. Well, you go to bed. Go to bed. Okay. We love you. Thanks for doing the show. And Bye -bye. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye -bye.
Bye. Bye, Bye Fran. There he goes. Ah, uh, what he's always, always. Uh, what, what? Now he's just a, a blank spell. Oh, there you go. We I got it. Near is our engineer is messing up, Emerson. Uh uh. Look, oh. it's our first time. Um. Well, that was this has been such a damn delight. Yes, it has been. This is this was one of. of we'll see how long we go with these, but we we so appreciate. Everybody that, that uh, listens in on anything that we do, we're, we're very grateful. And we, we, I always say, we can't do what we do if it weren't for you. So thanks for supporting our work all these years. And uh, we will continue to try and entertain during this crazy crisis. And if you enjoyed it and you want to toss us a dollar or two or five, or you can tip us on Venmo at Emerson Collins, or you can send a PayPal to Productions at gmail.com. It's at the banner on the bottom. And we'll be back. We'll do this again on Tuesday. We're going to try to do it twice a week. We'll wrangle some people and have a good time. All right, y'all. Be safe. Stay in. And let's get through this. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Are we on still?